Unlike some other motorsports, overtaking doesn't happen that often in rallying. But when it does, it can be pretty spectacular. Whoa. When one car has to pass another, there are two ways it can go. The car in front pulls over to let the faster driver safely come by, but on other occasions, well, it's a bit more dramatic. So sit back and feast your eyes on some of the most memorable overtakes in the history of the WRC. Danny Solar had broken his Mitsubishi suspension on his first event for the team, no less. Though he did pull over to let Roman Cresta pass, the dense dust meant the Czech driver couldn't see a thing and the pair collided. Unsurprisingly, that spelled the end of the rally for both drivers. A turbocharger problem meant Mikko Hivnen was limping through the stage in his Ford Focus, while Danny Sordo in the Citroen was flying in front of his home crowd. With Sordo fast approaching, it was unclear if Hivnen had noticed the young Spanish buck barreling up behind him, but after a wee nudge up the backside, there could be no confusion. Finally, the road opened up and Sordo sped past albeit not best pleased. <laughs> 2015 Rally Argentina and Andreas Mikkelsen's front top mount was no more. And behind, Thierry Neuville was catching up and catching up quickly. They are good friends out of the car, but this didn't prevent the Belgian from giving his old mate a gentle tap from behind when his patience had run out. He was itching to get by. Kenya 2002 now, and Tommy Mackinnon had an issue with his rear suspension, and Colin McRae was catching up quickly. Each team's management had communicated and they had agreed on a gentlemanly solution. The message from Subaru management is when you are within 200 metres, uh, Tommy will pull over and let you pass. But it seems that message didn't make its way through to a fully focused Mackinnon. Is he over right behind him? Yeah, we've told him, we're telling him again. McRae was furious, believing the Finn had deliberately done the dirty. Very good, Tommy. It wasn't very sporting of him. However, a massively apologetic Mackinnon at the end of the stage Colin. suggested otherwise. We have no information at all. We have something wrong with our radio. I'm sorry, very sorry about that. Slow two, slow two, right. Chris Meek had taken a trip into a snowbank in Sweden and was suffering with a lack of engine power. And while Meek could feel Oit Tanak breathing down his neck, the state of the road meant he was unable to safely move over. He eventually pulled to the right as far as he could, and the Estonian took matters into his own hands, but he came off far worse, going off the road himself and burying his Toyota in one of Sweden's snowbanks. Is he going Transmission problems meant Harry Rovampera was limping through 2005's Rally Cyprus and Tony Gardemeister needed to get past. The two Finns got fully up close and personal before Gardemeister was finally able to squeeze through. A collision with a rock left Marcus Gronholm's front left wheel hanging off at 2003's Rally GB. As a result, he was quickly caught by Colin McRae. The Scotsman passed the Finn easily enough, but although Gronholm was convinced he could still make it back to service, the local constabulary had other ideas. You can't go all the way back to service. I can go. No. Finally, and possibly the most bizarre of the lot, 
passing a car travelling in the opposite direction down the stage. But that's just what happened to Sebastian Loeb at Rally Sweden in 2011. Patrick Sandell had emerged from a snowbank disorientated and began heading down the stage the wrong way. Fortunately, a marshal was able to warn Loeb and the Frenchman took evasive action and passed Sandell without any major incident. Oh, <laughs> no.